Hello everyone. Today I am Dr. Sakshi Rajaria. I am a pediatric clinical geneticist. We will be discussing some common comorbidities found in patients of cerebral palsy. I have divided this talk in two parts and I will be taking up the first part today. Starting with the most common problem faced in cerebral palsy patients, fever. What is fever? Fever is when the, there is a documented rise in temperature of a child more than 38 degrees Celsius or 100 degree Fahrenheit. That is called fever. So for this we need to measure the fever, the measure the temperature by an instrument which is called thermometer. As you can see, thermometer could be of two types. We can prefer the digital thermometer. Digital thermometer in which there is just a button, you have to press the button. When you are replacing the thermometer in either the axilla or in the mouth, you press the button and when, the, when after 2 minutes or 3 minutes, there is a beep sound and after that you look at the value which is there on the thermometer. So where, where can we put this thermometer? We can put it either in the axilla or in the oral cavity and how long? We need to leave it for 2 to 3 minutes under the tongue or 3 to 5 minutes in the axilla. For the good uh, uh, measurement, if you leave it for less this time, then uh, it will be a very false reading. It will not be able to tell you how high the temperature has gone. And what is the commonest thing which we can do? What we can do when the fever is starting, when you feel that the child is starting to have a fever? First of all, if the child is wearing a lot of warm clothes, please remove all the warm clothing. Or the jackets, the big, uh, you know, uh, the lower warm clothings and expose the baby. But never keep the baby exposed directly under the fan. You have to expose the baby, yes. And you need to start tepid sponging. So what is it? As you can see in the diagram, I have shown. So there is this baby and a cloth. So normal cotton cloth taken, dipped in water, normal water, not even cold water, warm water, nothing, normal water, dipped in it, rinsed properly and sponging of the whole body. That is tepid sponging. So this is something which we should start when we think that the child is starting to have a fever. After this, more, very important points, never using a cold ice water for sponging. Use only normal temperature water. And after that, you can give the antipyretic, that is the medicine, in the right dose and in the right interval only after you have talked to your pediatrician, your child spe specialist. So this fever is not uh, only, sometimes the fever is associated with other symptoms. So what are these signs? These are called the danger signs which we should look for when the child is having fever. So the fever could be associated with loose stools or vomiting, any sign of any bleeding from any side. The sides could be either from the mouth, uh, from the genital areas, from the inner rectum, inner rectal areas or there is a, a prick side which is bleeding. So these are all important factors. Then third, if the fever is associated with fast breathing. And with that fast breathing, the child is having retractions. Retractions are basically when you see the child, he is having, you know, having very fast breathing, and you find that the chest wall is having depressions. That is chest retractions. Uh, or it could be that the fever is associated with crying while the child is micturating. When the child is passing urine, the child is crying, or the child himself might even indicate that he is having pain during micturation or there is ear discharge. These are all danger signs. So if I, any of these danger signs is present, please visit a doctor urgently because this requires treatment for the underlying problem and not just for the fever. Now next is an important condition which is uh, seen in uh, cerebral palsy patients which is called hyperthermia. So what is hyperthermia? is basically when the temperature rises to more than 101 or 102 degree Fahrenheit. Now sometimes hyperthermia can be mistaken. So nowadays it's uh, very hot when the summer months are there it is very hot and the child in the end of the day can become really hot because of the environment. So one needs to understand that there is something which is uh, the environment is also controlling it 
so the fever might be because of just of the hot environment and if you have excluded that you have made the child uh, you know the child is drinking a lot of fluids is in a cold environment and still he is feeling very hot then he might be having fever please take, check it with a thermometer he might be having sweating he might be very dizzy he can have increased thirst he is not feeling like doing anything a lot of fatigue headache uh when you're trying to uh, play with the child that is very poor concentration he is not uh, interested in it he is very irritable with an increased heart rate so all these symptoms could be that of a hyperthermia and how does one manage a hyperthermia you should always uh, try and keep the child in a cool environment not a very cold environment that is also something they cannot handle a cool environment a fan should be there and should carry a lot of fluids fluids in the form of water in form of coconut water simple fluids and carry always a bottle so that you have that fluid and a spray bottle is also something you can carry a spray bottle or a towel for which you can start spongy second thing is uh, how can you see environment is not something we can control but in some of ones if we wear, if you make the child wear, wear very light clothes very light colored clothes very light cotton clothes then it is they are very, very light and greasy so he will not become hypothermic very suddenly and as i all as i was starting with stay hydrated keep the child hydrated drink a lot of uh, make the child uh, drink a lot of water ors now ors is a very important thing so this is something you can also keep at home get the powder make it in 1 liter of water and keep it for one day in one day you, you have to make the child keep on drinking ors it is a very good substitute because it has a number of electrolytes which get lost in this hot environment still if you feel that you're doing all of this but still the hyperthermia or the temperature is not falling down then you should visit urgently the hospital second now this was in the summer months or uh, maybe the child is having this during the evening time when there is winter the child will become hypothermic this is also very very important to notice and understand because the hy hypothermia is something which which is when the temperature goes below 35 degrees celsius it is very life endangering the child you will not realize that the child has become really cold and he might just you know you will not realize that he might die even so hypothermia is a very very important situation just as compared to hyperthermia what are the signs of hypothermia this is shivering uh, fatigue again the child may not be very uh, it might feel very lethargic he might be having so in when the child has cooled down or is hypothermic then he becomes very slow in his activities then the breathing becomes slowed his speech becomes very slow he is quite confused he is not oriented he becomes clumsy and if you keep your hand here you will find that the heart rate has also slowed down so these are also very very this is a very very important condition to understand and to pick up to detect very fast how does one manage hypothermia so whenever you are traveling so cerebral palsy kids they do not have a lot of uh, internal uh, immunity and a lot of uh, they do they do not have internal uh, backup for you know generating heat so sometimes it, it might be ambient for you but for them it, they might become cold very suddenly so one must always travel with layers which is having a sweater or a jacket or a blanket if you are traveling in the train going somewhere carry a blanket safer side always carry it the ac might become very you know very cold and they might not be able to handle it so a jacket or or a top covering and always at that point of time if you are thinking that the child is becoming a little cold the peripheries are becoming a little cold then make him eat or drink something warm soup is a very good alternative some warm warm milk is very nice for them at that point of time and always cover their extremities which is their hand their feet the head and the ears everything should be covered that is through how they become cold very fast and why might uh, if might consider a warm bath 
and even after all these things that we have discussed that you have covered the child you have covered it with a blanket given him warm fluids even still the hypothermia is not resolving it is very important to urgently visit a hospital you cannot leave hypothermia untreated it is a life threatening condition a dangerous situation and hence both hyperthermia as well as hypothermia is very important now very important situation which comes is with the fever sometimes or even without the fever the child has seizures so what are seizures seizures are uh, strictly definition speaking it is a sudden episode of electrical activity which happens in the brain which leads to some involuntary movement and it might even present as a behavioral change so it is something which is unexplained happening in the brain leading to some movement and if you get recurrent or multiple seizure episodes which are unprovoked and there is no stimulus which is causing the seizure that that uh, is described as an epilepsy so for seizures and epilepsy it is important to understand how the seizure happens in a seizure the child has uprolling of eyeballs has it can be generalized which is involving all the hands and feet or it could be involving just one hand or one feet one side of the body or just a twitching of the eyes or one side of the face that can be involved at that point of time the child may cause there may be a passage of the urine or the feces where the child does not understand and he is not responding to sound he is not responding to your name and that after that episode so it might last for 2 minutes 5 minutes and after the episode the child becomes drowsy so this constitutes a seizure episode what are these different types so by the video you will understand more uh this is a video showing generalized tonic clonic seizures this is the person he is just dropped down so the seizure has started you can see his hands and feet which is having a tonic phase and a clonic phase and after some time the seizure resolves on its own it resolves very important thing you need to remember is this person who was with the uh, the person having the seizure he has made uh, the guy to lie down on the road in he was going to fall but before the fall he has stopped him and made him in the side of the road just like that so this is one type of seizure which was the generalized seizure then there is another seizure which is called as a simple partial seizure or the focal seizure we were talking about so he he is reading a book he is uh, you can see it in the video and there is some one involuntary movements which is happening in his arm something or the other which cannot be explained so the arm movements cannot be explained and it stops abruptly then this is another type of seizure in which this child is playing with a ball and suddenly he has stopped playing you can see he suddenly stops playing looks vacantly and starts playing again so this is a absent seizure so there are various types of seizures this is what i wanted to show through the videos that there can be a generalized seizure a focal seizure a absent seizure these are involuntary activities and this requires treatment what can we do at the time of the seizure you have to rush the child immediately to the hospital most most important you cannot manage a seizure episode at home but till the time you are going to the hospital there are some pointers that you need to remember and if you know if your doctor has as if the child is having seizures before and your doctor has prescribed midazolam spray then you need to give that at the time of the seizure what to do at the time of the seizure at home you need to make the child lie down on one side preferably on the left side so always try to make the child like you can see in the diagram make the child lie to one side which is the left side keep the lower hand leg straight so as to support that body the upper one can be bent and he is at at an angle so what why are we trying to do this is basically so that all his secretions which are there in his mouth do not go droop down to his lungs and they come out from the from the mouth 
Secondly, this place where you are trying the child to be on one side should be either uh, you know on a bed which has uh, you have put pillows around or it is on the floor. So basically the child should not fall and the child should not hurt himself. So, so anything, uh, any obstacles around should be cleared off, made some space and made to lie on one side. If the child is very small, a baby, an infant of one year, then you take him in his arms and it should basically be that the head is to the down. So you can see in the photograph, the head is to the down and all his secretions will basically come out. Nothing to be put in the mouth, nothing. No socks to be, no, nothing to be smelled, nothing. You should not do anything. You should keep, in the small child, you should keep the head lower. Now, once you have done this, you made the appropriate positioning, you should try and take the child to hospital as fast as possible for treatment. Now, another condition we know is when the fever is too high, the seizure spikes. There is, there is a seizure activity at the peak of the fever. That is called as febrile seizures. Now, febrile seizures are not epilepsy. Very important. And these are provoked by the fever. In the age group of 6 months to 5 years, it is a normal thing. One must not think that this is something which requires uh, treatment for a very long duration of years. This is a normal active, normal, uh, you know, a normal uh, phenomenon which can happen at the peak of the fever in a child of age group of 6 months to 5 years. But if it is a generalized, only if it is a generalized seizure, which lasts for a very small time, less than 15 minutes and it is only having one frequency of one seizure per 24 hours. Then it is called as a simple febrile seizure. Complex febrile seizure is when it requires a very long treatment. That is, if there is a focal seizure, more than two multiple episodes in a day or lasting for more than 15 minutes. That requires treatment for a very very long period of time. So this is about seizures, the type of seizures, a febrile seizure being a very common entity because fever is a very common problem and at the peak of fever. So basically most important management in febrile seizures is that if you fi find that the child is having fever, detect it fast, start tepid sponging, start the sponging as fast as possible and give antipyretics. Give the child uh, the, treat, the correct dose of the medicine to decrease the fever. Keep the child in the recovery position at the time of the seizure. Check if he is not having any glucose, the calcium is low and give the seizure prophylaxis as given by your treating doctor. Always a child with a complex febrile seizure needs to be worked up and given appropriate after appropriate investigations requires treatment for a longer period of time. So, wrapping up our first part, we talked about fever, hyperthermia, hypothermia, seizures, febrile seizures, very very important comorbidities found in cerebral palsy patients.